Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Christine. I'm a rising sophomore at Harvard University, majoring in neuroscience with a minor in ethnicity migration rights. And for this video, which I think will be the last video in my back to school series, I am going to be addressing some of the questions you guys ask me about starting a new school year or starting in college. You guys ask me these questions on Instagram and YouTube a little while ago, but I'm very excited to finally sit down and film this. I have tried to film it a couple of times, but it just didn't work out every single time. So hopefully this will be the final take, but without further ado, let's just jump right in. So first, how to stay productive in a home setting as it's very different from a school setting. So for this, I would say don't be afraid to switch up your space. The decorations that you have surrounding you, the lighting, all those little things can really help to make you feel just a little bit more productive, a little bit more inspired. For example, I put up string lights around my room when I didn't have it before. I brought in some plants and such to brighten up my space. So that made me feel just a lot happier to be in my room where I had to do work for school and for my summer lab position. Definitely don't be afraid to, you know, invest in your space that you are in because that's really a good way to help boost your productivity. And then another thing is whenever you get ready for the day and have a morning routine, as a disclaimer, I definitely don't do this all the time, even though I should, but on the days where I do get up a little bit earlier, make myself a good breakfast, get dressed and do my makeup and stuff like that, I feel a lot more productive just because I've already ticked off so many little boxes on my to-do list from the very beginning. That's a good way to get yourself in the productive mindset. And then the third thing is to give yourself big and little tasks tasks every day for a little sense of accomplishment because again it's so easy to lose motivation if you feel like you aren't getting things done so for example with youtube maybe i have to edit a video so then on top of that i'll add you know checking my emails which often doesn't take too long but still i feel so satisfied whenever i do with school like maybe i'll do my laundry and then while my laundry is going i'll you know, finish up the last paragraph of my essay, which is like a pretty big task for me while doing laundry is like a small thing. Just be sure to balance it out for a pretty effective way of boosting your productivity. Next, budgeting while being a college student. So for me, I'm definitely still learning, but one pretty basic rule, spending less than however you make. Everyone has different sources of income. Everyone has different ways of earning money while they are in college. You have to make sure that you're keeping track of your personal situation and then just overall spending less than you make each month. So on top of that, in terms of spending, in general, I don't think college students are spending an astronomical amount of money unless they are paying for their own tuition, which is a situation that many college students do find themselves in. But in terms of my personal spending situation, I think one of the best ways to budget how you spend your money is making sure that you learn how to say no to hanging out with friends because something that I realized during the first semester was really that a lot of times when you're making friends, you end up eating out a lot just because that's like the easiest way to like hang out with friends whenever you're trying to get to know them. Luckily, with uh, the remote semester, that's a problem that you won't have to worry about as much. So at least you're, you know, saving money with that. But in general, um, whenever you are hanging out with friends in person, that does cost money. Making sure that you are mindful of that. And then also try to limit yourself with like retail therapy. I know a lot of people, um, including myself, have been browsing lots of online stores and stuff like that. You don't always need to buy new things all the time um, to make yourself happy. Your biggest priority in college, I think, in terms of money, should be saving however and whenever you can. Okay, so how to read textbooks, long articles, readings, etc. So for me, the biggest thing is like setting the scene, setting the mood. So I like being in a space where I feel like I can really immerse myself in the text because whenever I am reading like books or articles or textbooks, I feel like that's like the most college thing that anyone can do. So I want to put myself in a good mood when I'm doing it. I like to have a really clean space. Whenever I was on campus, I would always go to like nice libraries, like the law school library at Harvard or the nice big library uh, widener. I like having a good space. If you can't go out, just make sure it's really nice and clean and neat. Clean your desk, your bed, vacuum a little bit, grab a drink like coffee or water, play some nice lo-fi music in the background so I really set the mood. And then also set up your textbook so it's easy to see and flip through. You want to make it so that your only concern while you are reading is just reading and absorbing. I like to make it so that my book is like on a book stand. My pens and pencils and highlighters and all that are just within reach. I have good lighting, little things like that. And then in general, you just have to remember to block out everything else that's going on um, to the best of 
of your ability. The biggest thing is to read with the intention of learning and not just getting it done. And you don't want to just think of it as a box that you have to check off necessarily. I think that's what makes it the most enjoyable for me. Okay, so how to make new friends and or maintain new friendships when they go to different schools. So this is pretty big for college students and I think especially now because everyone's worried about making friends under remote learning circumstances. So I think in general this will apply for any new college student regardless of if you are in person or online. Remember everyone's in the same position as you in terms of making friends and not really knowing a lot of people. So you can definitely take comfort in that fact. And with that, don't be afraid to reach out to someone first if they seem cool. Like I think during that first month or two of the semester don't feel like people are judging you for reaching out and trying to make new friends because chances are they'll be just as eager to make friends and on top of that don't be afraid to reach out to students who are in your classes to be like hey did you want to maybe study for this test together later work on this homework assignment like i said any little opportunity where it seems like you could start a conversation definitely take it in terms of keeping up with old friends for me it was mostly using facetime you know video calls or regular phone calls or text messaging even if you're just checking up on them once or twice during the semester for me it was enough to feel like i was maintaining a close enough connection with the people who I really cared about from high school. There's definitely some pressure, especially people who are really close in high school, to think they'd have to schedule like weekly video calls, text each other all the time, and people definitely come into college with that expectation, but I think realistically that's not going to happen there are definitely people who are able to do that and that's really great for them but if you aren't able to that's also okay definitely don't put too much pressure on yourself to stay in touch all the time so joining clubs and finding opportunities on campus like internships and such so for me mailing lists those are some of the biggest things for finding good opportunities during the first semester even just in general like i think they'll carry out throughout college when you join mailing lists for clubs that's basically when you sign up to receive emails sent out by like an organization if you find any clubs or organizations or associations that you are really interested in or even vaguely interested in just sign up as soon as you can because then you'll have the opportunity to look more into the kinds of events that they hold what kinds of activities they do for their members and then from there if you don't like it you can just ask to be taken off the mailing list but at the very least you're sure to be updated on the most recent events and news and information that's sent out from that organization and then also talking to friends who are in the same graduating class as you or upperclassmen friends ask around see what opportunities there are maybe for example if you're majoring in political science or gov then you can ask other friends who are majoring in poli sci hey are there any good clubs that you know about any good events you've heard about you definitely have to be mindful of which friends you ask for this because some tend to be a little competitive but some definitely like to share their sources it's really cool when you find friends who are willing to share that kind of information with you because then you can also share information that you think they might be interested in later on in the school year that kind of like collaboration and communication is really cool for college and college opportunities tips for building a resume or getting internships this is kind of similar to the last question but for me i really found it helpful to schedule meetings with um, the academic advisors from the college or even text like upperclassmen friends for advice so lots of colleges have offices dedicated to providing career advisors and support. I found it really helpful to schedule a meeting with the undergraduate science research advisor at Harvard right away because I'd never had a resume. I'd never done research. I didn't know what a cover letter was. She was so nice, so helpful. She immediately asked me all these questions about what I'd done in high school, what I was hoping to do in college. She helped me create a resume that best reflected what I had done already. If you're asking upperclassmen friends for advice, for example, with me looking for a neuroscience research positions. I texted my upperclassmen friends who were also studying neuroscience and asked them if they had any experience with neuroscience related research, if they knew anything about particular labs in the area that I was interested in. That really helped a lot because it's very specific to the student experience, something that can't really be offered by any academic advisor. But I think both are really important in terms of learning how to build my resume, look for good internships and research positions and opportunities like that. Tips when creating and choosing extracurriculars. For me, I would say consider what opportunities are available 
single two students in your area not only on campus but also off campus so on campus obviously clubs and organizations affiliated with the university if you have an on-campus job that's also you know an extracurricular but then off campus there are so many cool ways that you can create extracurriculars for yourself for example local homeless shelters or senior centers that you can volunteer at I've had friends also who like intern at nearby hospitals or law firms I don't know things like that there are so many ways that you could create extracurriculars and also don't be afraid to explore all your potential options and have fun with the extra curriculars that you choose to prioritize for my personal experience extracurriculars were a lot more fun in college than in high school because in high school it felt like there was always that pressure of choosing all the best extracurriculars that would look great on your college resume but in college you can genuinely just do uh, the extracurriculars that are the most fulfilling to you again from my personal experience so that's why I would really say to have fun with what you choose to do in college don't consider anything to be like a waste of your time explore what your options are really look around to see what you can invest your time in and invest your energy in how do you manage your time in order to get everything done I get this question a lot obviously uh, everyone has different methods but for me I would say having a bullet journal or an agenda is honestly the best thing you can do for yourself I would say it's a must for college students and I really do stand by that even if you just have a notepad where you write like a simple to-do list every single day whether it's deadlines that you have to meet little things like remember to exercise today your laundry today if you have classes meetings with professors or advisors and then also I would say multitasking isn't ideal but sometimes it's something that you just have to do use it as a strategy if you really are short on options so for example writing emails like if you're eating uh, breakfast or something like that. It's just a reality for college students. You're juggling a lot So you want to make sure that you're really just thinking ahead about what you're prioritizing and then I would say uh, something that snaps me out of my uh, bouts of laziness where I don't really feel like doing anything is knowing that being a student is really a privilege and so with that knowing that being busy is a blessing and not a chore so if I have like essays that I have to write about some philosophical, I don't know, article and I feel like, oh my god, that's so much, like my brain is tired, I would just think, you know, there are some students who would absolutely love to be reading and learning about what I'm reading and learning about. It also goes along with like staying motivated, but it really does help me in terms of time management with kicking myself into gear and really trying to get done everything that I'm supposed to get done. Someone asked, making great relationships with professors, how to reach out properly, etc. Someone else asked, forming better relationships with teachers over Zoom. I would say this, um, even if we were in person, email 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 even if it's a cold email professors love to hear from students they're often impressed with hearing from students who are reaching out for the first time over email i remember i attended this one talk with a professor who ran some sort of like big neuro lab or something like that at the university of michigan they said that some of their student researchers who they value the most in their lab were brought on because they emailed the professor out of the blue saying i'm really interested in your work i would love to be involved with uh, what you're doing you know they find that impressive the good thing about emails is you can take your time to look it over and make sure that what you're saying really reflects what you mean. Ask to chat with them about the class, about the material, about a homework assignment, studying, about their work. That's, I think, a really good and easy way to reach out and start that student-professor conversation. And another note is that even though they're professors, they're also just human too. Taking the time to raise your hand, uh, you know, virtually in class, respond to their questions, especially if no other students are responding. They really do want to make the class fun and engaging for you, at least for the most part. And then with that, attending office hours and getting to know them it's just a really good way to help them get to know who you are as both a student and an individual get to know your face who you are things like that then the final question how to keep motivated and avoid burning out and then also maintaining mental health especially because of online schools the most basic thing i would say the mindset like i said before being busy as a student is a blessing you want to just remember that you are lucky to be attending a university high school too you're lucky to be receiving an education even though you know school can be a pain for sure there are moments where you have to prioritize your mental health before learning isn't always that easy to just think like that because I know for me I'm lucky enough to say that just being a student is my biggest priority in life so definitely adapt that mindset to whatever your life circumstances are but then adding on to the discussion of avoiding burnout I would say be in tune with your physical needs too um, as 
just a human being before being a student. So ask yourself, are you eating enough? Are you eating healthy? Are you getting some exercise? Are you drinking water? Are you getting enough sleep? Having enough sleep is so important um, in general. <laughs> are you spending some time away from your screen? Are you making the time to chat with friends? I would be the first to admit that I feel like I'm never able to uh, keep up with all of these things, especially having enough sleep. But I notice I always feel 10 times better um, when I do make an effort to meet all of these needs. Whenever you're making sure that you're prioritizing your physical needs, you'll definitely feel like you're a lot more capable of meeting your other needs in terms of your mental health, emotional health, keeping up with your studies as a student, all those things. Having a good school life balance is so important, but it comes with practice and it comes with trial and error. It's something I'm obviously still learning too. So I hope that we can all start this new semester strong um, together. So I hope you guys are able to learn something or get something out of this little school q and I hope that you guys enjoyed this back to school series that I've been filming. I am excited to start vlogging about my upcoming fall semester, what with moving back to Boston and starting online classes. So you can definitely keep up with that um, on my Instagram, which is linked somewhere on the screen here. I post on there a lot more often just about my day-to-day -day life, so you can definitely keep up with me there. So yes, yeah, Stay tuned for a lot more fun videos and vlogs coming on the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.